All right, so we have a last thing to do here, and this is something we've not talked about before. So, so far we have always done our programming in idle, and then we've used the idle shell to view our program. But in reality, um, that may not be how we want to run our game. In fact, what we might want to do is um, we might want to, let's see if I look at my desktop here, um, we might want to actually run our program in Python. Um, and what we're going to do is, I don't know why, um, and I will show you separately how to do this, but if we run our program in Python, we actually get a little window here. And when we get the little window here, um, I'm going to say no, I don't need to see the rules. Um, hit enter to continue, you rolled a four and a five, your score is nine, do I run and roll again? No. Um, all right, so I get this. And this is great, but what's going to happen is as my program moves on, it's going to start to clutter up the screen quite a bit. And it's going to be harder to use. So I am going to put some strategically placed commands that are going to clear our screen. And now, um, one warning. This command will work in Windows. It will not work in Linux or Mac. Um, there is another command that will work in Linux or Mac, and someday I'll show you how to uh, make your program check to see which one is running. But for now, we're going to use this import OS function. So you remember we did that at the very beginning, and I didn't really tell you what for. Um, we are going to make it so that um, once it's done rolling or doing the input then it is going to clear the screen so I'm going to say os.system and then cls is a windows based command that clears our screen um, and I'm also when someone does the rules I'm going to say um, os.system CLS. So let's see how that runs differently. So we're going to go back in here and I am going to run this um, in Python. Do you need to see the rules? I'm going to say, yeah, I need to see the rules. And it shows me the rules here. And now I'm ready to play the game. I'm going to say, enter to continue. And look at that. I get a clean screen. And it doesn't, I don't have to scroll down to find my stuff. Um, do I want to roll again? Yes, I want to roll again. Rolled a 5, 3. Your score for this turn is 17. Do you want to roll again? Nah, no, I don't want to roll again. So it pops up. It says current score is 17 to nothing. Player 2, it's your turn. Hit enter to continue. And now it leaves that score at the top and it lets player two take their turn. Um, once their turn's over, it refreshes and now it's player one's turn. So it gives you a much better look to your game when you don't have to scroll down to see what's happening. And that's what the CLS function does. Um, so um, basically, by the way, just if you're curious, what this code actually says um, is it uses the OS library and the OS library lets you send a command using os.system to the screen and CLS happens to be the Windows command to clear your screen. Um, the command to clear a terminal screen in Mac and Linux is actually the word clear instead of CLS. So if I were doing it Mac or Linux, I would put clear instead, and th there is actually a way that you can have it tell you what kind of system it is so you can send the correct command. Um, we're not going to mess with that right now because mostly you guys are going to be using this in um, Windows. So there you go. We have a full functioning game. Um, one or a couple of last things you need to do. Um, so one thing I have not mentioned to you is you, you look... Um, and you can see what line of code your cursor is currently on. 
you are going to put your student ID number on a line of code and I, the line of code you put your student ID number is going to depend on um, what your student ID number is so you're going to have probably somewhere in the vicinity this is almost a hundred lines of code so what I want you to do and if it's not quite enough you might have to whatever the last two digits of your student ID are you're going to use put a comment on that line um, that is your student ID and um, Actually, now I'm going to change that. I'm going to change that. So what I want you to do is if your student ID is anywhere between, um, if the last two digits of your student ID are between 0 and 10, I want you to put your um, student ID on line 12. And the way you'll do that is you will, if there's already code on that line, you'll go to the end of that code you'll add the hashtag and you can add a comment there okay um, if there is no line of code you can just put the hashtag in the comment um, but if there if there is a line of code you're gonna put the hashtag at the end of it um, if your student ID is between the number or the last two digits are between um, 11 and 20 you're gonna put it on line 17 if the last two digits are between um, 21 and 30, you're going to put it on line 38. If they are between 31 and 40, you're going to put it on line 11. If they are between um, 41 and 50, you're going to put it on line 27. If they are between 51 and 60 you're going to put it on line 84 if it is if the last two digits of your student ID are between um, what are we on 70 and um, or 71 and 80 you're going to put it on line 9 if the last two digits are between um, 81 and 90 you're going to put it on line 73 and um, if I haven't covered you yet you will put yours on line 61 61 so why am I doing that sounds weird well a makes you listen to this video or at least watch the words and B um, you know if people are going to cheat they're at least going to have to look at enough of the video to figure out where to put their student ID because you probably don't know your friend's student ID numbers. Um, and I hope you're not just copying and handing this to people because I will be able to tell because you'll have different words and different rules and different splash screens and all that. But um, sadly, um, sometimes we've got to do it. So that is the end of this video for Pig. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, and talk to you later.